A company shipped 57 cameras to a store. Two of these are defective. If the store sold 20 cameras before discovering that some were defective, what is the probability that at least one defective camera was sold? And they give us a hint. You should not need this hint, but if they give it to you, you might as well take advantage. It says that the probability that no defective cameras were sold is calculated as the combination of 55 things taken 20 at a time over the combination of 57 things taken 20 at a time. We're going to do another problem similar to this one in a moment, and in this one I'm not going to assume the hint, so if you don't see how that hint was actually derived, we'll look at it more closely in the next exercise. But right now we're just going to, going to take advantage of that hint. First of all, the complement rule, remember, says the probability of an event is 1 minus the probability that the event does not occur. So they're asking us the probability of at least one defective, and I want to think of that as 1 minus the probability that there are no defectives. Because at least one defective, if you've got 20 cameras, that's a lot of possibilities. But if I think of it as a complement, it's simply the complement of getting zero defectives. So, and that's much easier to do. So my job here is to calculate the probability of no defective sold. Actually, though, the hint gave it away. They told us what that number is. We still have to calculate it, though. So your calculator keystrokes, I'll go through, I hope you've practiced enough by now that this is not an issue, but you simply take the 55, enter it in your calculator, the combination is shift 2, then you want to put in the 20, now you, it, that's in the numerator, you want to divide that by, now going down bottom, you take the 57, and you want to do the combination again down bottom, that's shift 2, you're taking it 20 at a time, so you enter 20, and you press equal. And that will give you 0 0.417. And that's the value that you want to put in here. So you end up with 1 minus 0 0.417, which is 0 0.583. That's the probability of at least one being defective sold. A sushi shop prepared 23 portions of seafood, two of which stayed out too long and spoiled. If 18 of the 23 portions are served randomly, what is the probability that at least one customer will receive spoiled food? And give the answer as a simplified fraction. This is very similar to the last problem, except they didn't give you the hint. But the strategy is still the same. It's easier to find the probability that none got spoiled food than it is to find the probability that at least one got spoiled food. So first of all, let's find the probability that no one got spoiled food. And then we can use the complement rule as we did in the previous problem. The complement rule says the probability of the event is 1 minus the probability of the event does not occur. So the probability at least one person got spoiled food is 1 minus the probability that no one got spoiled food. How do you find the probability that none got spoiled food? The hint on the previous problem sort of told you. Here, we're not going to take the hint. We're going to calculate it on our own. We can do that by applying the basic probability principle, which says that the probability that no one got spoiled food is simply the number of ways to get no spoiled food over the number of ways to get any, whether it's spoiled or not. That's the basic probability principle. In either case, we're selecting 18 portions But order doesn't matter, so that tells us that it's a combination. Now, this is the hint in the previous problem with new numbers and a slightly different situation, but it's basically the hint from the last exercise. But you can see now how that came about. 
we're choosing 18 portions so that's why there's an 18 in both positions the denominator is the number of ways to get any whether it's spoiled or not and that's why there's a 23 here because there were 23 portions in all and if you don't care if they're spoiled or not then you can choose any 23 of them but up top you want the number of ways to get no spoiled but there, there were two that were spoiled so that means of the 23 total portions only 21 of them were not spoiled so that's why the 21 appears here down bottom we're choosing among any of them up top we're only choosing among the 21 that were not spoiled that's how the hint came about in the other problem as well so you shouldn't really have to have the hint and we didn't here so now it's a matter of doing that calculation last time we just we were able to just punch it out of the calculator but this time they want it as a fraction that means we can't do what we did before we're going to have to get the value up top the value down bottom treated as a fraction and simplify it a little bit more work but that's what they want so that's what we have to do so let's take each one of those separately we can use the calculator on each one top and bottom but we can't do the division on the calculator because we want a simplified fraction as a final answer we do the denominator first that's a combination of 23 things taken 18 at a time so you put in 23 you do the shift 2 for combination then 18 and to make it evaluate you press equal and when you do that you'll come up with 33,649 now to the top same idea but this time we've got 21 shift 2 18 and press equal to make it evaluate and that comes out to be 1330 they want it as a simplified fraction so what we have to do is deal with each top and bottom separately it turns out that these numbers aren't really too terribly big but they're not also that small either so what I usually think of is I look at the numbers in the combinations and try those for instance I might try to see if it would divide by 21 if it won't I might see if it would divide by factors of 21 maybe 7 and 3 are then 18 and then factors of 18 so I'm trying to think my way through this and use logical choices I'll start off and just see if perhaps it divides by 21 I take my calculator and I take 1330 divided by 21 and see what happens it turns out it doesn't so I just move on well it didn't 21 didn't work but maybe some of the factors 21 will so I'll try 7 well I'll take 1330 divided by 7 it worked 33649 divided by 7 also worked if it works in both cases I know I have a factorization so 1330 must be 7 times 190 and 33649 must be 7 times 4807 that means I can divide the 7's out so now I've reduced the fraction down to 190 over 4807. I have to keep trying though, but I know that the numbers are reasonably small now, especially the numerator. I can factor 190. I know that's 19 times 10, and 10 then factors into 5 times 2. So I can get the prime factorization of the numerator very easily. It's just 19 times 5 times 2. So whether or not this fraction reduces now depends on whether 19 goes evenly into 4807 or 5 goes even into 4807 or 2 goes even into 4807 now 4807 is not an even number so I know it's not going to go evenly by 2 it doesn't end in a 0 or 5 so it's not going to divide by 5 you can try this if you don't believe me so the only hope for this reducing is that if 19 goes evenly into 4807 so let's try that it does it happens to go in there 253 times so what I know now is that 4807 is 19 times 253 and since I have a common factor between top and bottom I can divide that out and I end up with 5 times 2 over 253 and as I've already said 5 does not divide into that and 2 does not divide into that so I'm done 5 times 2 is 10 and the probability that none got spoiled food is 10 over 253 
Now that's the number, remember, that we wanted to put into the result that we were actually looking for, which is the probability that at least one got spoiled food. And we know that's one minus the probability that none got spoiled food. So if I put 10 over 253 in there, one minus 10 over 253 is 243 over 253. So the probability that at least one person got spoiled food is 243 over 253.